Hi folks, Mr. James here, and uh, in the last episode I, uh, in this bootstrapping MVC series that I'm doing, I showed you really quickly just a little bit of a teaser on getting bootstrap installed in your MVC project. Of course it was just that, just a teaser, as all I did was walk you through the package manager console and the idea of uh, installing the NuGet package into your ASP.NET MVC project. Today we're going to go a step further, we're going to customize the template because what I really want to do is get you working inside of Bootstrap and in particular on these JavaScript plugins that are available. So again, we, we had a quick look at, at these before, but everything from modals, tooltips, and a collapsible accordion kind of control, um, right through to alert messages, popovers, the carousel control, and even an autocomplete feature, a plugin called Type Ahead. We're going to get to that very soon, uh, probably in our next episode. We'll start looking at those one by each. But right now, we're going to focus on getting our template set up, installed, and baked into the layout. I don't want to dismiss everything that, ha that already comes for me for free. For example, uh, the membership API and what's built in for authentication and authorization. So I want to keep my account controller. I want to keep my home controller and just kind of restart the style, but start with those pieces already in place. So we're going to do just that, uh, fire up Visual Studio. Um, today, I, because I want to demonstrate some of um, what's available in uh, the new version of uh, Visual Studio, I'm going to be, and in particular MVC4, I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2012. The process is still very much the same though. We're going to click on File, New Project. We're going to select the MVC4 uh, application, and I'm going to pick in here uh, Bootstrapping. MVC. So we've got a couple of different options now. We've got that empty, empty kind of idea that's now available um, in our uh, MVC4 project. We've got basic, which is a little bit less of a shell, and there's a little bit more there. But we're going to go with internet application because it does have what we're looking for as far as membership goes. I'm going to click OK. The membership bits are going to come into play a little bit more uh, down the road when we start playing with some data and start populating some of these controls um, with data that are you know, in the context of a specific user. Okay, so uh, here we go with um, the, our home controller that's set up. I'm going to run this uh, application and as it loads for us we'll uh, uh, have a quick look at uh, what this template, this basic template gives us. You know, it's not a bad looking uh, site, it's not a bad looking um, piece of code here, but it's not going to be the Twitter bootstrap thing that we want to do, and also it's not as easy to use as kind of what's already available to us inside of bootstrap. The other thing is, is if all of us create a site that looks like the MVC4 standard project, it's not going to be very, it's like 1984, uh, everything all the same and conforming. So it's okay, we've got a couple of things going on here. We've got this, uh, this header uh, type thing going on, we've got uh, menuing system going on, our register and login controls, and we've got this, we suggest the following, and then there's some uh, paragraphs down below here. When we go to about, or we go to uh, contact, I'm just waiting for about to load, uh, nothing interesting going on, just some uh, simple pages that don't have a lot going on. So this should be fairly easy for us to uh, remaneuver inside of the layout and get things built up. Now that the basic template is loaded, the project's been created, and the pieces critical to our application are here, what we want to start doing is dissecting the template that was produced for us automatically just out of the project template, and really get into uh, what it means for us to get Bootstrap fully involved in our views. So to do that, we're going to want to go into our shared directory under views and drill into our layout.cshtml. This is the key thing where everything that we've already seen inside the app uh, is loaded out. And for the most part, we're going to blow most of this away. But it is important to understand a couple of things. First of all, there's a site title being rendered here. That's going to be important. Uh, we've also uh, got this partial being loaded. This is for our login, our membership capabilities. Next we have some action links that are being rendered here. These are our menu items. These are basically a way for us using this HTML helper to um, invoke or to look up what the route would be given uh, the controller and action that we're requesting here as well as specifying some text. So this is important because it's going to be become part of our uh, part of our, our core uh, layout as well as part of the menu. 
Uh, next, we have a featured section that's being rendered, and then we render the body below that. Finally, uh, something else that's interesting to note is that scripts and uh, styles, these two new helpers that are introduced with the latest bits of MVC4, they render out any bundles that have been created. Now, this is actually a good shift. It was a little bit of black magic going into the previews of MVC4, but they've really done something that I really like, and that is they've broken out the configuration for bundles into a config file, where you can now go in and override what is and isn't included. So we're not going to be using jQuery UI, so we can just get rid of it. We're not going to need to implement those things. So um, there's a script bundle for jQuery, jQuery UI, jQuery validation, uh, modernizer, and then the standard site CSS and the base CSS that's used for the jQuery UI. If we have a look at our, and also note that some of these are script bundles and some of them are style bundles. Pop back over to layout, we've got styles. Both of those bundles are getting rendered. And then we've got scripts and modernizers getting put in at the top of the page. That really helps with making things look good even in lame browsers like IE6, which any self-respecting person on the planet would no longer be running, but we put it there anyways. In fact, there's some CSS problems with different versions of um, Firefox and IE, and Modernizer takes care of making those things happen a little more uh, nicely, having them look good even on browsers that don't normally support it. So uh, finally at the bottom here, it renders one more script, and then it gives another option here, a render section scripts as part of the default template. This allows any page that falls uh, later in the project uh, to add its own scripts to the page. Uh, this is a nice little thing that they've added to the template, and um, I think it's great that they put it down there at the bottom of the page. It lets everything else render nicely as well. So uh, what do we need to do? Uh, first of all, uh, let's go get us some template right out of the bootstrap page. On the examples panel here at Twitter, github.com, whack bootstrap, we can just go into this uh, simple starter template, and I'm going to right click on here and just say view source. What an easy way to get the source code. And all we're really uh, concerned about here um, is what appears in the body. So we're going to start by just copying uh, this out here this entire body content. And we're going to head back into Visual Studio. And we're going to start whacking away. The first thing that I do is I just copy in that big uh, amount of um, just this markup that was here for me. And we're going to start uh, trying to understand a little bit better uh, what we need to replace. So here we've got this uh, menu piece. I know I can just go and grab menu and put it up in its place up here. And then just to clean as I go, I'm going to just format that a little bit. And then I pull out this nav section. Next on here we've got this title, uh, right? So I'm going to take this action link that they've got rendered, and I'm going to go put it up in uh, my title where it just says project name. Perfect. Got that done. Now I can delete that. You can see all I've got left is my login partial in this top part of this header. So I'm going to copy and paste that up into the top here. I don't want to forget about it, but I'm not ready to deal with it just yet. So I'm going to comment it out uh, using that classy razor syntax. I'm going to delete the header because I don't need it anymore. And then we're down into a footer. Okay, not really interested in it, so I'm going to delete that. Um, I've got some render scripts action. Uh, it's important. I'm just going to leave that there for now while we go and look at our scripts and our uh, CSS bundles. But then I've got rendered section featured. So I've got to do something with that. I'm going to move that up here really quickly. Uh, into our container. This is our main, this container is our main part of Bootstrap, our main part of our page. And then here is the content for the page, and we're just going to simply replace that with a call to render body. So, all said, all told, uh, we should have everything in place to get things running, except for the fact that we're not yet configured to use the Bootstrap bundles. So let's go up here first of all, and we're going to kill 
this base CSS. We don't need that anymore. And down here, um, you know, I'm going to leave jQuery in there, but I'm just going to make myself some room. Next thing that we need to do, as I said, or as I alluded to, is we're going to need to go in and grab, uh, we're going to need to set up some configuration. Now, I've, I've just uh, very quickly already set up those bundles. Um, so I want to add those for us here. These are going to look something like this. So I pop back over to my bundle config, and I'm going to put in two bundles here at the bottom that'll make it a little bit easier for me to uh, implement in our page. So the first one's going to be my script for Bootstrap, and the second one is going to be my style bundle for the bootstrap.min.cs. Now these need to appear in my project, of course, so I'm going to really quickly pop into my package manager console. And inside my package manager console, of course, I'm going to do an install package twitter.bootstrap. And as this goes out and gets my dependencies for me, we're going to see it fill in in the content here that I want. Bada bing, bada boom. That all gets added. My, uh, my JavaScript will be added in my scripts as well. So there's bootstrap.js. And now you can see with the, uh, oops, with uh, my bundle config over here, uh, bootstrap.js is in my scripts, but I'm going to be calling it, it's in my, a script bundle with a virtual path that is at the root of the site called script bootstrap. And when that's requested from the browser, it'll be uh, intercepted and of course uh, the MVC framework will take care of that and return the minified uh, version of this script. So that appears right here. Same thing with my CSS, the minified version. Now I've, this is already minified, but um, I don't know, maybe it's like an inception thing and it'll be like ultra minified. I don't really care. MVC is going to take care of it for me. The um, compression, the minification engine will take care of it for me. So, uh, next thing that I need to do uh, is get into my layout and make sure that the scripts and the styles that I've rendered um, are now part of the rendering process. So, again, I'm going to just uh, go in and add this script really quickly. Um, up at the top of the page, I'm going to add my style for Bootstrap right there. And then at the bottom of the page, after jQuery is loaded, I'm going to load the uh, JavaScript that I need to run Bootstrap as well. Now, that's not required. You can use the CSS components of Bootstrap without loading the JavaScript library. But the whole purpose, again, is for us anyways, is that we want to be able to use these JavaScript plugins. These are jQuery plugins, so we need jQuery loaded. Therefore, we need to get us some jQuery and then get us some Bootstrap. Um, as a side note here, if you wanted to, you could actually destroy the jQuery bundle that's created and just bundle jQuery up inside of Bootstrap, uh, building this uh, jQuery library directly into your bootstrap library that's only making one call from the browser now I believe I've got everything wired up here so we're at the magic 10 minute mark I'm gonna hit play I'm gonna hit debug I'm gonna press F5 and wait for this thing to load and hopefully it doesn't do too bad of a job so pressing play on our first try we actually get fairly close let's have a look at some of the things that we need to do first of all this header section is not exactly where we want it to be it's not doing a great job um, second of all, um, you know, we need some space up from the top of the page, and we want to make it look a little bit better. So let's let's do a couple of things here. Um, we'll head back to our template, and we're going to add uh, some of the components or some of the um, uh, simple base CSS that's av available to us in uh, Bootstrap to make this look a little bit better. Going back into our template here, uh, the first thing that we want to do is update that hero section, that title, that banner at the top of the page. So I'm going to go in here, add a class, um, set it to be hero unit, and then that's where I'm going to render my section. So my featured section. It's not a required section, but if it's rendered, if somebody has a featured section on the page, then it'll get rendered inside of this hero unit. Now, I don't want the hero, hero unit to always render, so um, I want to 
uh, use a trick here um, to say uh, if section is section defined and then pass in featured then go ahead and uh, oh sorry here I got some bad syntax going on then go ahead and render this part out uh, this just basically means that we're not going to get this hero unit at the top of the page if somebody hasn't put a featured section in their page so after we hit F5, it comes a little bit better off, but it's not exactly where we want it to be. We still have some spacing issues here, and we still have this uh, mux of stuff down at the bottom to take care of. So uh, one of the things that you'll find if you pop back into the source code here is that there's a style um, that's in the header that puts a padding at the top to make the container, to make the, the top bar stand out from the, the rest of the page. I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to implement that up in my head. Control EF to give me some nice formatting. Thank you, Visual Studio. And we're going to build it one more time and have a look. And there we go. We've got some nice, a little bit better spacing up at the top. Now, as far as these little nuggets go down to the bottom here, um, I'm going to leave that as, a, as an exercise for the reader. We've got the hero unit in place there. You understand already a little bit uh, from my other walkthrough about the scaffolding that's available inside of Bootstrap. So what you can do here is in the grid system use some of these elements, for example rows and spans of three or four wide and build columns for those uh, LI elements that are there. Replace the um, existing page. Now I, we don't want to do too much by way of transforming the content. We really want get at something where we can just, just change the style. But what I'd like to do here is instead go into the index page and actually adjust how those things are being rendered uh, using the Bootstrap uh, template and the scaffolding available through the grid system in Bootstrap. So um, that's where we're going to leave it today. Um, I hope you've uh, got a little bit better idea about how to make this thing start to look. I'm going to make some additional adjustments and uh, post back what you could have if you put a, uh, just a few minutes of work into it. And uh, of course, uh, later on, I'll be posting the source code for this so you could use that as a base if you wanted to. Um, something you can extend, work on, refine, or even just learn a little bit more about what uh, I've done. Again, I'm Mr. James. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this. We're going to start looking at those uh, JavaScript plugins, the jQuery plugins for Bootstrap in the very next episode. Thanks for joining me.